Ladies and gentlemen, in this kick-ass family court tutorial, I'm going to explain in layperson terms what you may need to understand about Practice Directions 12J that provides all judges and magistrates with guidance and directions in relation to allegations of harm and domestic abuse. I am Philip Kedge, the kick-ass McKenzie Friend, a retired police chief inspector, the director of the McKenzie Friend UK network, and fearless family court vlogger. Nothing I say constitutes legal advice because you don't need legal advice and you don't need lawyers. I provide guidance and support as a layperson. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe and hit that notification bell. Let's do it. In this tutorial, knowledge is power and there are two essential documents for you to get your hands on. The first is the Practice Directions 12J itself, which is titled Child Arrangements and Contact Order, Domestic Violence and Harm, and is 12 pages long. The second essential document is a four-page memo from the President of the Family Court himself, Sir Andrew McFarlane, who gives further guidance on how Practice Directions 12J should be applied by judges and magistrates, and this document is called Fact-Finding Hearings and Domestic Abuse in Private Law Children Proceedings, Guidance for Judges and Magistrates. So, if you are facing allegations of domestic abuse, you simply cannot afford to ignore these two documents, and I will send you a link to download them today, along with tons of other free information. All you have to do is to go to contactphil.co.uk and complete the form and say something like, Hi Phil, thanks for kicking ass. Please send me practice directions 12J. So, to the detail and the main points to understand. If during a child arrangements application your ex makes allegations of harm or domestic violence and abuse, Against you, the court must consider these allegations in relation to future child contact and any safeguarding implications that they may have. Often, such allegations are contested by the other side, which means that the court will have to consider whether a fact-finding is required to determine facts. But the important point here is that Practice Directions 12J is a tool used to determine whether allegations should be heard at a fact-finding hearing or not. Let's examine the first handful of important points. Allegations should only be considered by the court if they are relevant and necessary to making decisions in relation to the welfare of a child. If one of the parties has failed to attend in Miami due to allegations of, of abuse, the court needs to explore whether that exemption was valid and whether evidence of abuse actually exists. The court must seek to identify the real issues in the case, including whether one parent is seeking to deny contact. Next, it is important to understand that judges and magistrates must consider allegations in the context of the definition of domestic abuse as defined by the Domestic Abuse Act of 2021. Once again, that full description is part of Practice Directions 12J, which I will send to you when you contact me. The court may need to consider whether more evidence is needed and may invite the parties to provide what is known as a Scott Schedule of, of Allegations and Evidential Statements. In determining whether a fact-finding is necessary, the court must also consider the following, and I shall put these points up as they are very important. When determining whether to order a fact-finding hearing, consider a. The nature of the allegations and the extent to which those allegations are likely to be relevant to the making of a child arrangements order b. That the purpose of a fact-finding is to allow assessment of the future risk to the child and the impact of any abuse on the child. c. Whether fact-finding is necessary or whether other evidence suffices and d. Whether fact-finding is proportionate. 
So, the fundamentals of relevance, purpose and proportionality. But what about allegations of coercive control, I hear you ask? Well, the principles for determining coercive control are the same. But with coercive control, the court is looking to see whether there is a pattern of behaviour that can be deemed as coercively controlling. Where? Coercive behaviour means an act or a pattern of acts of assault, threats, humiliation and intimidation or other abuse that is used to harm, punish or frighten the victim. Controlling behaviour means an act or pattern of acts designed to make a person subordinate and or dependent by isolating them from sources of support, exploiting their resources and capacities for personal gain, depriving them of the means needed for independence, resistance and escape, and regulating their everyday behaviour. So, in the event that the court applies Practice Directions 12J and determines that there are allegations of harm, abuse or coercive control, that is likely to have a bearing on future child arrangements and where there are denials by the parent being accused, it is very likely to order a fact-finding hearing. So, at fact-finding hearings, the court hears the evidence to establish facts around the allegations based on the burden of proof of balance of probability, which means whether an allegation is more likely than not to be true. Now, I am always very wary of using language like establishing the truth because I don't personally believe that fact findings are necessarily reliable in establishing the truth. They just establish what the court determines to be facts based on the low threshold of balance of probability, unlike in criminal proceedings where the threshold is beyond reasonable doubt. So that's your introduction to Practice Directions 12J and to get your hands on all the information to empower yourself then contact me right now at contactphil.co.uk I am Phil Kedge, the kick-ass Mackenzie friend. Until next time.